has been a five-year period now since the retirement of Alex Ferguson where the club hasn't felt right. And I don't know what it is. And I think I've spent a lot of time criticising Jose. And personally, I'm starting to turn around on that a little bit because I like this Jose Mourinho that we're seeing at the club at the moment, a man with a bit of fight. He looks like a very different character to the one that went under at Chelsea. So I kind of, I'm starting to support Jose, but... The club has been mismanaged over the last five years. And Stephen, you must look at it from a Man City point of view and you must go, well, this is exactly what we want. (laughs) Well, I know a lot of things about clubs being mismanaged. I mean, I'm a Man City fan. I was around the 90s. uh, So I know a thing or two about that and not many clubs can replicate that. But um, yeah, this obviously is a City fan perspective. This is absolutely hilarious. I can't pretend it isn't. But at the same time, you you can see some kind of cracks and you can see why fans would be a little bit, you know, Mm. discontent and so on. And I think in general, if it was to say who's to blame and all that, I think as ever these things, it tends to be not just one thing, you know. I think there'll be maybe some of the players are letting the coach down. Maybe uh, Mourinho's a little bit fictitious as he always can be and Edward Wood does seem to have some questionable <laughs> like a competency sometimes. So I think it's one of those things where it's a number of things but um, I'm kind of of the opinion uh, that Edward Wood yeah, he, I don't think he's always as bad as people make out, and I think he's got every right to um, kind of veto some transfers as the as his senior, so to speak. And I think the idea initially was that people were criticising Edward Wood because he was throwing loads of money at loads of players, and now when he does mm-hmm. try and say, well, we should keep Martial for the future or so on, people are criticising him for daring to have an opinion. So initially it wasn't because he had an opinion, now it is because he has an opinion. So it's a little bit like, well, what do you want him to be? And with Mourinho, well... I've got a strong opinion on Bruno in general that I don't think he's the same person he was a few years back and I'm not sure he ever will be because in my personal opinion his kind of shtick and his aura was built around this air of invincibility Uh, you think about him joining the Premier League initially being this young handsome kind of maverick of a manager he's still Um, pretty good looking uh, yeah he's weathered (laughs) a bit still a silver fox uh, yeah yeah, he is he's no Mancini though he's in those pictures recently but in general I don't think he still has that air of kind of like invincibility that he used to be and it used to be that the players would get behind him because he believed in him when he had that season at Chelsea he looked uh, and also a little bit he kind of looked a little bit weathered post Real Madrid too I feel like people started to question some of his decisions and that was the first time it's ever happened to him Mm. as a result I feel like he's not been able to fully deal with that um, kind of that stripping of his kind of kind of just unquestionable ability Um, and as a result I feel like he's a little bit um, of an impersonation for what he used to be so I feel like sometimes people question him but he doesn't have to deal with that so I wonder sometimes if that affects him a little bit I think you hit on an interesting point there because Jose Mourinho isn't the same character that he was at Real Madrid and Chelsea no. and he's been given a very different task as well because when Mourinho joined Manchester United we all said we know the type of manager he will be he's a manager who uses large amounts of money to build a team he buys players that are established and effective and that's how we win things which yeah. there you have to go well maybe we do need to blame Ed Woodward maybe we need, do yeah. need to blame the Glazers because he's not back in the manager certainly in this transfer window hasn't backed to Mickey with the money that maybe he needs to operate listen Jim you know we all have a, an opinion we don't know really what goes on behind closed doors yeah. you know I think what Steve said about Ed Woodward I think you know you, you've got to give him I think a little bit of leeway because you know the modern game now from my era obviously has changed completely in terms of getting people into that door and you know I don't like saying it but you're going to get people through that door because one thing now really determines whether a player is going to sign is an agent that wants vast mm. amounts of money. <clears throat> and that's, yeah. excuse me, and that's for me is sport it. Um, and that's more difficult, even though the likes of Manchester United lost Carlos Seven, he went to City instead of staying at Manchester United. That was a big thing for me, a signal of saying that football is changing, not for the better, but for the worst. I think money does control football now. If you've got more money, you, you'll get the best players. There's no question. We will talk about the victory at the weekend very soon because it was a decent win over Burnley and City had a blame, good win as well. Blame Mourinho for that win. Blame him. <laughs> yeah, let's blame him. Let's blame, blame him for Mourinho. the win. <laughs> not sure it's called blaming when it's that, Mickey, but we will be talking about that very soon. I don't want to be tarred with the anti Mourinho agenda, anti United no. media stick here. So we will talk about that soon. But I'm interested in this point about where the blame lies and who the fans are blaming for the poor start to the season, because it is a poor start to the season. 0345 treble one seventy six twenty five is the number to call if you want to have your say. Chris Darwin is on the phone. He is the editor of Red Devils Report. Evening, Chris. Evening, Chris. Hi, Jim. How you doing? How you doing, guys? Very good. So, come on, where are you pointing the finger? Who are you blaming for this mess? 
Well, I've just been listening to you guys for the last few minutes, and sort of the the point around it's a little bit of everything does does ring quite true. I, I the, the more you guys were talking, the more I kept coming back to the owners, the, the Glazers, and just thinking it all comes from them. And and the reason I feel that is that when Ferguson when Ferguson left and retired, and when David Gill left as well, which I think is a really really critical point in in United's current sort of time, they didn't replace well, quite frankly, and Edward would got the gig because he does the things that the Glazers are interested in. He makes the club money mm. and he does that and his, and his name with uh, with United was made being through uh, doing all the commercials and, and bringing in shed, shed loads of money in that respect. He's not a football man per se. Now, the blame then for me shifts from the Glazers to Woodward who should have then realised that he had limitations in his skill set when it comes to running a football club. I mean, yeah, he can do all the, he can go and get the next uh, tractor partnership or the, the next tyres or whatever it is in, in, in this day and age that, that people need to be seeing on the advertising hoardings. Find me somebody who bought a tractor off the back of one of those and, and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of give them a season ticket for life. But the, the Woodward then should have been thinking about, well, okay, rather than listening to all the agents in the world who are telling me to buy this player, buy this player, buy this player, get this manager in, he should have been thinking about finding uh, a director of football who could have taken care of the football side of it, the sporting side of it for him. And that's where, the, for me, the blame starts to shift onto, onto Woodward a bit. But then, of course, you can't leave Mourinho out, really, can you? I mean, at the end of the day, he, ha- he was backed to begin with in terms of the players and the players that he wants to replace now are typically the players that he bought and he's taken one look at them he must have looked at Lindelof in his first couple of training sessions and realised he'd been sold a pup has he bothered to try and coach him and develop him? No he hasn't he wants to go out and buy Harry Maguire who let's be honest has made the name of scoring a, scoring a header in, in the World Cup not really being massively challenged and was found out twice in the two big games that he played in yet he suddenly thinks he's worth 65 million quid so I wouldn't be really backing Jose in this window if that's the sort of money you want to throw around on that sort of player so that doesn't really answer your question Jim I'm afraid well, it's, so, it's a bit of everything again are we looking at this problem and going there is a problem here in that the Glazers want to make money from a football club and they've done that in various ways some of them have been more appealing to fans than others Ed Woodward has been brought in to create a football club that makes money and actually a football club that makes money isn't able to compete in the modern footballing world with clubs like City who aren't there to make money the clubs like City are there to produce a world beating football team I don't necessarily agree with that though because don't forget that under the Glazers United have won stuff they had the right manager in charge now admittedly he was there to begin with and, and he was probably running the club more than they were at that point but it's not as if since day one United have just been unsuccessful since the Glazers took over so there is a formula in there somewhere which means United can still be successful I mean don't forget at some point when United have been changing their managers over the last few years Pep had, what Pep was available he was, they could have gone out and got him if they really really wanted to and he probably would have gone because then he could have been the man who would take he, he would have then continued the legacy of United and, and, and so on and so forth so they have made some shocking choices along the way which they're now paying Paying, um, paying the price for. And I'm sure some of us are old enough to remember what happened to, to Liverpool when they got a couple of managerial cho- choices wrong after their period of dominance and, and they're, still, they're still not back yet. So it's, it's got to be something that's got to be ironed out quite quickly. So do you think, I mean, what you said from the start of your conversation there about the Glaziers, I mean, do you know how much they've given so far to get the best players in? Uh, to, they, to be they, honest, they brought the likes of Pogba for, for any, any. A, you know, a loss a lot of money. Um, I don't think they've been very um, bad in that respect in not producing the money for the managers. I mean, they've had no, spent I, quite I, I, a I lot agree. of money. They, they've, they've spent a lot of money, indeed. But then the cynical side of me goes, yeah, but is Pogba just about the fact that he's one of the best midfield players in the world? They they know the money they're going to make back on, on that transfer. Yeah, yeah, he but then at, he, 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 he at the time, just being a Champions League final. I think that was a sound yeah, purchase. Yeah. And given the fact he was at United before, and that, I mean, hasn't... Ugh. He should work out there, but that was, was that wasn't an unjustifiable purchase, in my personal opinion. And coming from a city fan, wanted him at the time as well. Yeah, they back, they they have backed the managers, but have they backed the right managers? Then is, is the next question. But you you 
you, I, I'm criticising the Glazers more for the, the the decisions, the appointments they've made, rather than them throwing money at a manager. They, they yeah, they they put money into the to the transfer budget, no question about it. But that for me, they shouldn't have given Woodward the overall uh, running of the sporting side of the football club. They should have been keen to go and get someone like a Monchi at Roma, who has a very clear transfer strategy, a recruitment strategy that that is really analytical and and, and knows the players they should be going to get, rather than listening to Jorge Mendes. He's just saying, look, he's my client. He's a good player. He'll, uh, 100 million quid, everyone's happy. There's got to be, you can't be the best club in the world if you're recruiting in that way. Chris, cheers for your call, mate. Thank you very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Cheers, Chris. No worries. Cheers. Uh, that's Chris cheers. from Red Devils Report. If you want to get involved, 0345 111 is the phone number. 87711 is the text number. It is strange that I think Mourinho and Woodward seem to be the people that are getting the majority of the criticism in this scenario, where there's two big factors that are largely involved, ignored rather. One of them is the Glaziers, who got a lot of stick back in 2010 when they were securing a lot of debt against the club and all that kind of stuff. The the yellow and gold scarves, you still see them every now and again, but it's kind of died down to a low grumble rather than a protest now. And the other one is the players. Some very highly played, very talented footballers, and I look at people like Alexi Sanchez, who maybe aren't quite pulling their weight at the moment and aren't quite performing to their level. And surely that's where the buck has to stop at the end of the day. It has to stop with the players, doesn't it, Mickey? Well, I mean, they, you know, they, they're the ones that got to go and do the job. Well, you know, they get selected and they've got to go on that football pitch and, and, and give themselves, you know, a, an opportunity to show the manager that they're the best players in, in, in the country and the best players to play for Manchester United. But... We know about form. City have got wonderful players. They have that squad now. I think probably the best squad is, there's no question, the Premier League. Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, you, you can't compare United at this moment in time. For Josie Mourinho, when he took over, he took over a squad that he probably, out of that squad of 24, he probably didn't want about 15 of those players. He wants to get his own players in. He, yeah. He's bought, what, five, six, seven, nine players, I don't know, so far. It's to get the right players in, the right group of players, and you are going to make a mistakes along the way. City have done it. Even God, he always brought players and he got rid of them. But it's getting the right ones in, Jim. And I, I don't want to blame the players because I've been a mm. footballer myself. You know, they go out there and give the best. It might not be the best at this moment in time, but, you know, you can't just say they're not, you know, they're not giving everything on, yeah. a, on a football pitch. I won't I, say that. Ever. I think they are good, but I think they will be trying. I mean, the idea of being trying and being and being confident to do your best is a different concept entirely. Like, I, I think in general, when there's a collective failing, it, that's when it, and consistently that's when it comes back to the manager I think that's a fair assessment one or two players out of form that happens that's just live you put that down to you know whatever and incidents and you just move on and learn from it but I do think in general uh, when there's so many players uh, that look out of form you have to look at the manager and I don't I think I'm, I'm going to try and I can't speak for United fans I'm, I'm a blue but I can presume a lot of the frustration comes from maybe just looking like they'll have no idea going forward no. and when you see someone like Bielsa come in at, in Leeds and transform him inside a month and a half with sheer coaching on the pitch and having played this Barca light football in the championship scoring goals passing from the back with players worth one tenth of what United players are worth it, that is, that's pure and utter coaching that is just coaching yeah. and I guess this, that's why some United fans can presume are frustrated because it's not the fact that maybe they're not winning the league all the time maybe it's just because it's quite hard to watch and that does come back to the manager's style and that does come back to what they're doing on the pitch and they shouldn't be looking laboured against the likes of you know yeah, the, the only Brighton difference like between that. United and everyone else in that Premier League there's a different pressure at Manchester United you know because what has gone before in terms of winning everything and I I, I think from being a former player there inside that dressing you know every time you take that field it's like a cup final Mm. 